Okay. All right, guys. All right. So i uh, going to go over pretty much the basics of an open house. I know all of us have done open houses probably in the past, um, but we were doing that mastermind. I don't know if you guys saw it, but we were talking a lot about going back to basics and how we get to revisit what we do. Um, back in the day, we used to have all these open houses and, you know, sometimes you wouldn't get a lot of people. Now, the last two years, every open house, you usually have a line of people out the door and whatnot. So we got to go back to to basics and talk about what is needed to make a good open house. So in my opinion, uh, a good open house starts before the day of the open house, right? So part of what we're doing today, um, so for those of you joining on Zoom, I'm here in person with some agents that are doing some door knocking. Um, so what we're going to do today is essentially go to the neighborhood where we're having the open house and knock on the door and say, hey, guys, my name is George Castellins. I'm here with Lifestyle International Realty. I just want to let you know that we have an open house. We're, li we're listing your neighbor's property for sale. And I wanted to invite you to the open house. But also, if you have ever heard, which I'm sure you guys have, this is a beautiful neighborhood. If you've ever heard of anybody saying, hey, I kind of want to live in your neighborhood or I wish I could buy a house in your neighborhood. Well, this is the opportunity right now. You know, somebody could, if you've ever heard of someone that wants to live in your neighborhood, you can tell them right now that we have an open house on Sunday. It's from one to four. Um, what I have here, guys, if you're on Zoom, I have a flyer. Um, I use this thing called List Reports. Essentially has a picture of the property how many beds and baths, a quick description, and it also has our open house advertised there. So you can see it's Sunday, 731 from 1 to 4. So the idea to canvas um, is always great. You always want to knock on doors, but a lot of times people don't like solicitation or they don't like to people to just come in and start knocking on the door for no reason. So the fact that you have something that you're not really soliciting them, but you have the opportunity if they do want to sell or if they have a buyer to come in. So what your objective is, every activity that we do in real estate, we always want to have money in mind, right? Because that's what we're here for. We're ABC, always be close. You always got to get to the closing. So you're getting in front of them. You're knocking on the door. You're inviting them to the open house. But real quick, what you say is a couple of things. And you guys can work on the script your way. I'll give you a couple of examples. You can transition to say pretty much, if you have a buyer, please send them out. Or here's my card. Here's my information. They can contact me. If they can't make it to the open house, I can schedule a private showing. So you have a potential to get a buyer of somebody that they know. Maybe they're renting the property and are looking to, to purchase, right? So you have that opportunity. And then what can you do with that? You could also theoretically turn that into a rental. Because you if, if you're going to help them find a house, hey, does your landlord know that you're moving out? You know, do you mind if I reach out to them? Because I can, you know, get this rented out for them. That way the transition is easier for you. And then what you hit them with too is uh, if they're in the middle of a lease, Sometimes the landlords would rather they get out because maybe they can rent it out for more. So say, hey, let me negotiate on your behalf to see if your landlord will let you out of your lease early without losing your security deposit if I can get more money for the rental, right? Just whatever excuse you could try to find, you could potentially get a, a buyer from it and you can get a, land, uh, a rental listing out of it, right? The other option is they might say, oh, you know, I have a buyer direct. Try to get the information of the client. Don't be too pushy, but you know, sometimes when you give your card, the people are not going to contact you. Whereas if you get their information, it's on you to contact them. You always want to start and give the card, obviously, because it's less pushy. But you also want to prod and say, look, if you want, you give me the information. I'll give them a call and I'll try to help them out. Some people will give it to you. If not, then just say, okay, no problem. Just have them call me when they're ready or whatever. Um, at the same token, we also talk about, like, they might have real estate related questions, right? So at that point, take advantage to, to answer what you can. If you get hit with a question that you don't necessarily have the answer to, don't tell them you don't know, but say, look, um, I would love to give you more details about that. I just have to finish knocking on these doors before it gets a little too late. So can I just, you know, can I circle back to you? Let me get your contact info and I'll call you and, and sit down and give you the proper attention that it requires. Write down the questions and ask me what those questions are and I'll tell you what the answers are or I'll come and do the meeting with you. It's your client, but you'll have my experience there for you, right? So that's another thing that you can do. The other thing, um, another way that we could get business is say to them, look, um, if you don't know anybody, I understand. But by the way, we're only going to be able to pick one. I think we're going to have a lot of attendance because we've gotten a lot of views through our marketing, right? You're trying to promote how much of a great job you're doing and you're trying to hype it up and say, look, I am sure we're going to take this thing. It's going to fly, but I'm only going to be able to pick one buyer. I'm going to have a lot of leftover buyers for the right price. Would you be interested in selling your home? Right? It's not like, do you want to sell the house? It's always for the right price because everybody's got a right price. Right. Mm -hmm. So the, the whole thing is trying to get into it. So somebody's been joking around, ah, yeah, for a million dollars. Be like, well, let me see what your house is like. You know? Maybe it is worth a million dollars, whatever it is. Like, obviously, you're, you're probably not expecting for the house to be worth a million dollars in a neighborhood where you're listing one at 560. But the joke is always there where for the right price, they'll sell. They might 
not know how much they can profit. So schedule that meeting. If they entertain you, even just entertain the, the concept of you coming in to give them a valuation of their home, they might be interested in selling. But always try to try not to take too much time right then and there, because if you're not ready, it can catch you off guard and you can mess it up. If they're like, yes, I want to list my house tomorrow, that's the only excuse I'll say, you know what? Forget these flyers. Let me let me take this listing right now, right? So you got to read the, the the room and read that opinion, right? So the conversation is always, guys, I'm gonna have a ton of buyers left over for the right price. Would you sell your house? Ah, you know, maybe. Ah, my wife and I've been talking about it. We want to go to Florida, whatever. You might have that conversation right there. That's a golden opportunity. Say, look, um, can I schedule an appointment to come down and sit down with you and your wife? No commitment whatsoever. I just want to take a look around, bring you some comparables, and show you what I think I can get you for your house. And who knows, I might be able to sell it off market and get you a discount on, on the commissions. They want to hear that word, right? Because you say, okay, I already got the buyer. I'm doing the marketing. Whatever you got to do, essentially your job is to get through the door for a potential listing appointment. All the other details, we, they get hammered out. Because when we say a discount, like, you know, traditionally, I'm, the, the commission has been like 6%. So we say to them, oh, I'll give you a discount at 5%. When in reality, most of the time you take it up. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of things you can do. The whole point is you're trying to use these buzzwords to get into the door. You're not lying about anything. You're not being disingenuous. You're just using the words that you know are going to resonate with the client and, and potentially get that listed. So you can get buyers, you can get sellers, you can get leases, like you can get a ton of business from doing this type of activity. A lot of agents do a lot of their business by door knocking. It's better when you're not soliciting them because if you're just knocking on the door for no reason at all, a lot of times they want to slam your door shut. At the very least, people are nosy. They want to see what's up. You know, at the very least, you end up in conversation by if you say, no, I have nobody that wants to buy. No, I, I don't want to sell my house. OK, well, if you're curious, I'm here in your neighborhood once or four. Please swing by. I'd like to you know, see you. Whatever. Just build that report. Give your business card. Try to build that report with them because they might come out. They might call you. You don't ever know what it turns into. Real estate is the type of business where you have to be in as front of as many people as possible and try to turn those opportunities into business. But it all starts with getting in front of somebody. And this is a great opportunity to get in front of somebody. All right. So this is kind of what we're doing today. This is that pre section. Now, I will say a couple of things before you go door knocking. We got to do a couple of things here. One, you want to look at comps in the area. OK, first thing we do is pull up the actual property. Let's get to know this property. Let's know how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, what are the features? Does it have central air? When was the roof done? All these random things we want to know about. Because if you get in front of somebody and they say, oh, yeah, you know what? My cousin was looking for a house. Oh, they need four bedrooms and at least one of the bathrooms has to be on the ground floor because they got another. Like They just start having those scenarios. You don't want to look like, uh, I don't know, right? So let's know our shit with this one before we get out there. So we're going to sit down. We're going to kind of look at the MLS and I'll tell you guys because I've been in the house. You guys haven't been there yet. I'll tell you what's up. But you always want to get familiar. If you're doing an open house for another agent, schedule a showing to go look at that house before you do the open house. The last thing you want to do is show up and like rush and you don't have all the information. You look like an incompetent agent. You just blew that chance with that potential seller, potential client, whatever it is. So that's what we're going to do. First is that. The second thing is we're going to look at the other comps because they might say to you, oh, you know, that's a split level. I don't like split levels. The flow just doesn't work for me. You know what? I really just want a ranch. Well, if you looked at the comps, there might be a ranch nearby. You say, hey, you know, this one might not work for you, but there's one over here, uh, you know, two blocks away on that side. And they have, it's a ranch, actually. If you have that, you're just going to be so much more impressive as a realtor that you're armed with it. That might not be your market, but a good 30 minutes of research and it can become your market, right? That's the whole goal of, of, of real estate. Eventually, we want to focus and hyper-target certain areas where you don't even have to do this, but every time you should you should run these this research. So you want to know your house, you want to know the comps, and then we're on to go door knocking. You usually do this the weekend before, um, like Friday. You don't want to do it on like Wednesday because people are going to forget about it, so doing it the Friday before is great. We always do this like after, like, 5.30 because people are usually home. Um, but I'll tell you one thing about this area, there's Hasidic Jews in the neighborhood. So at sundown on Friday, they have the Sabbath. So you can't, they don't talk technology, they don't do business. That So that's the time where like you have to respect that, right? So you might be coming up to a door when, later tonight and it gets to that point. But, you know, obviously it's sundown late now, so you can get there around 6 o'clock and they'll still, they'll still talk to you. Um, and those are the people that are probably going to come and buy this house because they need to live in close proximity to mm -hmm. their their place of worship right so right now they don't have like yes normally it's like a temple or synagogue right now in this neighborhood they don't have it what they're doing it is like they're using a house as like a temporary church so it's walking distance so a lot of times when they move they have like certain groups of people they move they don't have it built they'll use one of their houses as the place so 
information for you guys to know. Um, so fast forward the day of the open house. So we're, we're at the open house. I don't want you guys just to show up at like 15 minutes before an open house. Typically you want to get out there, you know, maybe at least an hour beforehand. And sometimes people actually canvas the day of, right. And it's good because you can draw some people out. Um, but what you could also do is you can uh, come over set up your signs. And a lot of people just, as they see the signs, they start coming out. I usually team up with a lender for my open houses. And the reason why is because sometimes people just show up because they see the open house on Zillow, they see it on Realtor, and they are not pre-approved yet. That's fine. You got to understand that you're not necessarily trying to sell this house at that open house. It'd be great to sell the house at the open house, but in reality, it doesn't happen like that. What you really do at open houses is prospect people. And instead of paying for leads, you're paying by three, four hours of your time, but you're getting FaceTime with these potential buyers. I've been able to convert a ton of buyers. The majority of my buyers have come from open houses. So I, I really implore you guys to do these open houses. But again, you got to have certain things ready when you're at open houses. One is I like to have a lender with me. One, they could cover the food, right? I can have them pay for the food and, and the drinks. And then we do the sign-ins and whatever. And then two, if somebody's not pre-approved or they have a finance question, the person's right on site. So you're providing a service pretty much. And then three, it could get lonely if it's not a too busy of an open house. So you have somebody to talk to, right? So talk about interest rates or programs or, or whatever, right? So um, th those are the things that you could do at the open house. Um, typically, I like to have a sign-in sheet. During COVID, I got more tech and I created a little QR code and people just scan it and then go in and sign in. Um, I don't like to harass people as they walk into the door. My open houses, a lot of buyers are actually kind of like surprised because they usually come in and they're like, oh, you don't want me to sign in? Like, what's going on? Typically, I welcome them. I don't bombard them. I say, hey, how's it going? Welcome to the house. Please take a look around. I'm going to be in the kitchen. If you have any questions, I'll help you. Right? I'm not trying to be that product because I, right off the bat, anytime I have a first impression with someone, I'm trying to win their trust. Right? So me being relaxed and not being a bloodthirsty realtor who's, you know, starving for the business I'm not trying to attack them because they, they don't like that. So I let, I welcome them. I let them go through. Usually I have them when they're coming down the stairs. That's when I catch them, right? Even though I'm kind of floating around, I'm paying attention. Yeah. And as they're coming down the stairs, I gently walk over to the living room. And as they're coming down, I'm like, hey, guys, any questions for me at this time? No, no questions. Okay. Hey, what about that master, right? That beautiful bathroom, whatever. Just do a little small, small talk. Mm -hmm. And then I usually let them go. If they do have questions, that's the moment where you really sit, sit with them and, and really explain um, you can choose to show a client around the house, but it's to me, that's not the best strategy. It feels like you rush them sometimes. They don't get to really talk to each other. Sometimes a lot of people feel pressured. They know what a bathroom is. They know what a bedroom yeah. is, right? It's not. I feel like the only time I've had to do this when the seller is adamant, like, okay, yeah, I don't want no anybody to have themselves. Me, like, yeah. Don't let people walk around by themselves. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I feel like I've, I've had, I've had situations like that. I have situations like that. And also when there's tenants and it's like a rental, sometimes you do have to walk them and you have to wait people outside and then do them like a group at a time. The traditional open house is not that case, right? Um, but what you do is, is the important thing is the mentality. You want to be warm and welcoming and you don't want to harass them so that they want to stay and hang out. Now, the other trick with having the drinks there at the kitchen is you want them to, hey, do you want a glass of yeah. wine? Do you want a little bit of water? Hey, I have some you know, cheese and crackers. Here's a cupcake, whatever it is. Have them stick around and just hang out. And remember, you're not really trying to sell the house. So what you want to say to them is like, oh, um, you know, did you like it? What are your thoughts? If they don't seem interested, don't harp on the house. Quickly pivot and say, okay, well, what about this house didn't fit your needs? Now, you being a good realtor that you are already looked at comps. So if they say, you know what, the bedrooms are a little too small. And you can hit them with something like, oh, you know what, this house was built in 1960s. The rooms used to be a little smaller. Maybe something for you is like a more modern 1970s. Like there's actually a buy level that just got listed. It's in the price point. I can schedule a showing for you and then pull them to the side and, and you know, show them some pictures. So uh, yeah, sounds amazing. Okay, right? It sounds amazing. That, it. And when you do that, that's that's how you get it, right? But you don't know. You yeah, <laughs> but you don't know that unless you do the research, right? So so that's what we're here to do. We want to do the research and then when we're on site, we do it. I like to do open houses with at least one or two other agents with me. One, for newer agents, it's experience. But two, for me, it's like, look, if I'm busy with my open house and I have more people coming, hey, this person's legit. They're out here from New York. You know what, guys? Hold it, hold it down. I'm going to go show this house right now. Like, you know, you could be that agent and, and you can convert it. I've had many. I can't even tell how many clients I've converted just like that. Just at an open house, I had that opportunity. One of them was right here. So, <laughs> so you, you could do that. You could absolutely do that.
So that's why it comes in handy knowing your pumps, right? Um, the other thing is just be social with them. Just honestly be social with them. And if they're they're just like tired or like, oh, we're from New York, we saw a bunch of houses, nothing's hitting, look up a couple of restaurants nearby. Be like, hey guys, before you drive up to New York, I just want you to know there's uh Linden House Diners on St. George, like two blocks from here. Great eggplant farm, whatever. <laughs> just be that local tour guide because you just leave such a good impression with them. You know how many times I say stuff like this and they'll just be like, hey, do you have a business card? Like, they'll ask me for it before I'm even soliciting the, the business because <laughs> all I'm doing is I'm providing value. And then from there, they see that value and they want more, right? That's your goal. Be a realtor that can provide value and then take it from there. Um, just all right. yeah. <laughs> I got I got testimony right here that it works. So, um, yeah, so so you want to do that. That That's the value. Um, the other thing with the open house is these are all things that we should think is standard. But when you get there like an hour before, set up your signs, right? Go inside, walk through the house. Always walk through every room of the house. Turn on every light. I don't care if it's broad daylight out. Turn on every light. The more light, the better. Um, make sure this, there's no funky smells. I usually keep like a Glade plug-ins in the car. And I'll plug them into the house, like in the hall. Sometimes it can be too much, right? If it's a smaller house, just plug it in maybe at the entrance, maybe in the hallway upstairs, maybe three, one in every level, right? Because you want a good smell. That first impression is key. Sometimes I'll have like candles in, in the kitchen, just little, you set the mood, right? Because it wants to be inviting. It wants to be something that people want to stay and hang out. That's crucially important. And you can reuse the Glade plugins. Don't think it's really expensive to do this, right? You unplug it before you leave it and you take it. Um, the other thing you want to do is you want to make sure, like, guys, check the toilets. Sometimes, I'm serious, people will leave stuff there and, yeah, check the toilets. Freaking flush it. Don't even open the lid. Just flush it. Why not, right? Just check everything. Go through the basement. Everything. All right? You would be surprised how many problems, potentially, you can catch. I've had situations where I've caught problems. And, like, let's say, look, you're, you're again, you're not trying to hide anything. But let's say that there was some leak from a pipe. And you're like, holy shit, that thing's leaking, right? Let me cover it here. And then I'm going to text my client and say, hey, you need to get a plumber over here and fix it. You're not hiding anything, but you just don't want to create a, a situation where the client is turned off by something that you're going to fix anyway, right? Do all of these things. Be prepared for that day. This isn't your house. It might not be your listing. So take the time to go through everything, all right? Final thing is when you do your sign-ins, one of the things that I do, I have people do paper sign-ins now or I do the, the QR, right? I also take my phone and I make notes. So if somebody tells me, hey, my name is Kim and they sign in, whatever, I always try to remember Kim, Kim, Kim. Yeah. Then before they leave, I have a conversation with them and whatever they tell me that's a value, I want to make a note, right? So I just put Kim has two kids, wants a ranch, whatever. Because I can't write that on an open house sign sheet and have other people see that. You know what I mean? So you want to take those notes and you write it. I've, in the past, I've also used Excel sheets on my computer and I'll put a column all the way on the right and I'll scroll to the right, add my notes and they'll go to the left. But you can do whatever way you want. Just add notes because there's a follow up, follow up part. When you follow up with them, the worst thing you can do is like not remember who they are because they felt if you did a good job, they felt like you personally connected with them, yeah. right? So you don't want to be like, oh, who was this again? <laughs> oh, you're the tall person. Oh, you know what I mean? Like it's terrible. You want to just be like, oh yeah, great. Oh, you know, your kids were so cute. I can't believe like whatever you can write on your notes to remember and just hit them with when you call them. It makes a big difference. So whatever they say, I don't care what you're talking about. Anything. It doesn't have to do with real estate. If it's real estate, even better, right? Um, and you'd be surprised. A lot of agents, a lot of um, clients show up without their agents because, you know, agents send them out. I'll just tell you, I send some of my clients out on open houses, but only after I've done my buyer consultation. I have full confidence that they're not going to dip on me because I've already done my part to build that report. There's some agents that won't even do their first showing. Like they get inquiries about it and they're so lazy. Like, oh, there's an open house on Sunday. Go, let me know how you like it. Forget about it. That, is, that client is mine. Like mm -hmm. I'm not trying, but just with all the things that I'm doing, they're not going to go there. I've had clients that show up and be like, look, I really want this house. I have a realtor, but I want the house. Can we write the offer right now? First thing I ask, do you have a buyer's exclusive agreement with your realtor? Have you signed a buyer's exclusive agreement? Typically, if the if the agent is so lazy that they didn't, you know, that they sent them to open house, they probably didn't. Second thing is like, look, you have a realtor. I'm not soliciting you, but if you want me to write the offer, I am here doing this. We can. I've, I've also, I don't know if this is true, but I've heard that if you do sign an exclusive and the agent didn't set, show you the house, that that's just like yeah, there, there's there's an issue with like procuring cause, right? So if the agent didn't show the open the house, 
then you they, they don't really have a claim that they procure the cause. But however, it is an open house. So if they show up and they have like a relationship with a realtor, it, it, it gets dicey. You really don't want to get into that. If they have a buyer's exclusive, I typically just kind of at that point, mm-hmm. I just kind of say, look, mm-hmm. you know, call the agent, whatever. Yes. Theoretically, a buyer's exclusive is really non-binding. It's it's I mean it, it's binding to the point that it's not. Um, so you could convert that, but I typically just try not yeah. to. I try like honestly, not one time have I had that situation yeah. happen. Mm-hmm. I've had buyers that straight up right out the spot. They're like, you know what, my words are so lazy. They don't even look for me anymore. Uh, I want I want somebody who's going to be about it. You write it up, right? So again, th- there are ways for you to get the business right there. But the more important thing, where I see a ton of new agents fail, is they let buyers walk out without any type of follow through. Okay, maybe this house isn't for you, but which is the house for you? Right? That's the question. No problem. This house didn't work out. You're not offending me. It's not mine. I want to help you. If you give me a chance, just tell me what you're looking for, and I can email you a couple properties that that work. Right? That's how I get them every time. So you ask for the email address. You ask them if it's okay for you to contact them. Ask them if they're working. A lot of times they'll say, yeah, I'm working with an agent, but whatever. Send it to me. You know, if if it's something good, that's an opportunity. That's an invitation, right? That somebody's messing up, and and you have the chance to pick that up. yeah. Here. Yeah. No, it happens. I mean, you. Yeah, there's. And we'll talk about later how you can protect, to protect yourself against that. I'll do like a back to basics with buyers, and it's about like doing these buyer consultations. That's where you really win that. Um, but yeah. So so you go and you have those conversations. Um, when you're there, you know the comps, so you can talk to them about other properties in the in the area. But the stuff that I hit them with, ninety percent of them are from New York, right? So they're looking for transportation. You have to look up and see how, if you want to buy that house, can you get to New York? So what do I do? I go on Google Maps. I type in from that address and I put New York Penn Station as the recipient. And then I look at the different tabs and you can see the bus routes. You can see the train routes. You can see everything. If it's a one seat ride, you want to emphasize that a one seat ride means they get on the train and they go straight to Penn Station. Some municipalities are in one seat rides. You have to take the train, transfer at Newark Penn, and then from Newark Penn, take another one. You want to know that too. Maybe you don't talk about that. You say, yes, you can get from train from here to there. But if it is a one seat ride, you hit them with that. It's a one seat ride. It's very convenient, right? Um, Another thing is like the average people that are coming here, you're talking about either going to downtown, like the, the World Trade Center path. So if they're going to downtown, you want to know that too. And what you tell them, usually if it goes from Union County up to New York Penn, it stops at New York Penn at some point. And it's so easy to transfer. You take the train over, and right in front of the door is the path. They literally just cross the, the, the platform and they're already in the path. So you want to be knowledgeable in that. This house particularly is close to St. George. There are buses that go to New York from there. So you want to look up the numbers and be able to have the schedule. These are the things that it makes you seem like an expert and it, it takes you 30 minutes to find this stuff out when you might never have stepped in, into this city. <coughs> That's right. So <coughs> that's the thing that you want to do. Um, next thing. When you're wrapping up, you want to make sure you obviously turn off all the lights and remove all your plugins, you know, clean everything up the way that you left it. There's nothing worse that you can do to leave a mess for the seller or leave a back door open or stuff like that. So you want to be mindful. If it's your listing, that's your client is going to call you and hound you. If you're doing an open house for another realtor, they're getting the calls and complaints. Probably the last open house you're going to do for that realtor. So be mindful of everything that you're doing at the open house. Take a look around. Make sure everything is the way that you found it. If if it's a certain situation where, like, let's say there was clutter and you want to move things around, take a picture before you move it. Then move it out the way. That way it's clear for the open house. When you go to pack up, open up your phone, look at the picture, put everything back. Simple stuff, but it's the basics, right? After the open house, you want to collect all your stuff. I usually don't call them the day of. It's a little thing. But I have in the past gone through, like if I met somebody and they were like, good rapport, I'll send them a text. Hey, great meeting you today. I'll be in touch with you this week and see, you know, what's up, right? Do a little follow-up like that. But the next day on Monday, I right after my open house, I usually sit down and we do feedback, all right? So you get the people's information, you get the emails, you call every single person. Don't be lazy. Don't just send a mass email and wait for responses. Take everybody, give them a phone call. Hey, Nicole, it was great meeting you yesterday at the open house. Um, just quick question. Any feedback for me? Anything that you thought? No. Yeah. The house didn't work for you. No, I get it. Oh, it's too big for you. You know what? There's another ranch nearby that I saw or like, just tell me a little bit of what we're looking. I'll do a search for you and I'll send it to you right now. A lot of times that's all it takes. Guys, it's a 10 minute MLS search and you can convert them into your buyers. You can send that email at 10 in the morning and by three o'clock, you can be scheduling insurance with them. Mm-hmm. It's that easy. And guess what? They're probably submitting inquiries on Zillow and there's agents that aren't calling them because they're too busy or not well organized. You can capitalize on all of that. All right. The follow-up is key. If they don't answer, leave them a voicemail. 
send them a text message. Great meeting. you. Follow up with an email. Hey, these are a couple other houses in the neighborhood like the one that you looked at. Maybe it's not the same neighborhood. Maybe it's the same city. Maybe it's the same price point. Whatever it is. If some, when you talk to them, if they're just looking for an easy commute into New York, show them houses in Rawway, right? They're looking in Linden. They have a train station. They're looking in Rawway. They can look at Roosevelt Park. Get to know the buyer that's looking there. When, when they show up, I usually ask them, hey, have you guys been looking for a long time? Oh, yeah, it's a crazy market. Start talking. Look, uh, right now, interest rates went up a little bit. It's still very affordable, and we think that prices are going to rise. But there's less competition because the more serious people aren't, aren't here. I, I have hopes that I can help you get a house, right? Like, try to ease that. And then ask them, where have you guys been looking? Make a note. And then when you go to do the search, add those other properties. You're giving them value. That's the number one thing. Anybody that's taking their time to look for stuff, they want value from somebody to help them. And if you're giving them value that their agent or three other agents that they've asked for stuff, they're not doing it. Agents are not doing this, guys. It's so easy to pick up people's lunches because they seriously, seriously just don't, they don't want to put in the work. If you put in one hour today, you put in two hours before and after the open house and one hour on the Monday after the open house, I guarantee you'll convert to something from the neighbors, from a friend of the neighbors, from somebody at the open house. Hey, maybe it's not them, but they have another friend that's looking and that might work. You will pick something up. And at the very least, you're putting yourself in front of other people without having to pay that you otherwise wouldn't. Right. So that's pretty much the setup. You want to prepare properly by doing all these things. You want to do the prospecting. And you want to do the follow up. The final note I'm going to add, if you want to be just like a mega rock star, this is pretty cool. Go on Fizzbos for sale by owners. Pull up a list of the for sale by owners in Linden, right? Call them. Hey, Mr. Whatever seller, I actually have an open house at a nearby and I saw that you're selling a house for sale by owner. And I, th- I'm, not, I'm not harassing you for your listing. I just want to tell you. I'm going to have a lot of buyers. And if you want to come by and take a look at the house and how it competes with yours, by all means, I'd love to meet you there, right? You're inviting them to come out. Now, depends on the conversation. Read it out. Follow up with this one. Look, I'm going to have a ton of people here and I'm only going to be able to sell it to one. Is it okay if I have other buyers? Can I bring them to your house? If, if it essentially meets the criteria? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Bring them by, blah, blah, whatever. All right, great. When can I schedule an appointment to walk through? That way I can meet people on Sunday and I know that if your house works for them. What do you do when you show up to that listing? I mean, to that uh, to that house to go preview it. You try to convert it. Yeah. You, yeah. You, the, the hardest thing is to get in front of a visible. They're so agent adverse that when you call them, they don't want to talk to you because they don't want to pay. So if you're calling, but you're inviting them to an open house, number one, it's a little refreshing to them, right? So it's a little, it's a little new. But number two, you actually have an opportunity to get a listing appointment that other people can't because they're harassing them when you're really not. You're previewing because you're going to have a bunch of buyers on Sunday that potentially could be the buyer for them. But while you're there, build that rapport, win them over, you know, charm them. Oh, I'm amazing. I love this area. Blah, blah, whatever. You already saw the comps. You're already knowledgeable. You can turn that physical into your listing just by doing this, right? Now, at the very worst case scenario, you look at another. Um, oh, sorry, guys. I love this one. At the very worst case scenario, you're looking at, uh, you know, just previewing another property that potentially you might have a buyer for. And a lot of agents are not showing physicals. So it might be something that's been overlooked because nobody's taking the time to look at it. So take that extra step and call those physicals and potentially convert them. And they might come out to the open house. Poor nosy. They might show up to your open house. Do a good job at the open house and you might, you know what? They might get tired of it. They might be talking to you like, oh, you know, had the house on the week for a couple months. I mean, the house on the on the website for a couple of weeks and nothing's been going on. And just say, hey, I, I don't know, maybe your photography, you know, I'd have to really take a look. But, you know, let me see what I can do to help the market. Maybe they're tired of it and, and they want to list it. That's an opportunity for you guys. All right. Any questions? <laughs> yeah, I know. No. There's a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of opportunities. Anybody on the chat have questions for me? I can answer right now. Let me see here. Uh, thank you for information. How from when you send the homes? What platform do you send them from? Um, I just send them from the MLS. So I just search the properties of the Garden State MLS or whatever MLS I'm working, and I email them straight through there. My signature is there. Everything is linked directly. Um, yeah, you could do it right from the MLS. Any other questions? Pretty much. It's almost, yeah, it's almost five o'clock. So we should head, head out to do that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to wrap that up guys. Back to basics. Let's do open houses. Let's try to get a lot of clients. There's a simple way to prospect without costing you much money, if any. And if you get a lender to partner up with you to the open house, everything is completely free. 
All right, guys, I'll catch you at the next one. Thank you so much. No problem.